Hello everyone and welcome to Payroll Liability Adjustments in QuickBooks. My name is Pat Hartley. I'm a small business accounting consultant with accounting on the go here in Southern California. I'm an advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor. I'm proud to be a member of the Intuit Writer Trainer Network and I'm also an associate accounting instructor at local community colleges here in Southern California. Let's go ahead and get started in our QuickBooks file and adjusting our payroll tax liabilities. Now I know that payroll in itself can be a bit intimidating and then when you have to make an adjustment it can be absolutely terrifying that we want to make sure that our general ledger and our tax returns all are in sync and they all have the right balances and they all have the right reporting. So let's see how we, QuickBooks has made that simple for us. We just need, need to know the right path. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my, my payroll report summary. I'm going to go here to reports, employees and payroll, payroll summary report. And I want to expand this report to include the whole quarter for 2015. So I'm going to expand this to include December the 31st and refresh my screen. And I'm going to concentrate now on, on Greg Schneider. I'm going to concentrate on the California unemployment tax. After some analysis and some reconciliation, we have discovered that we have under accrued our payroll tax liability as well as our expense for Greg Schneider for this fourth quarter. We've under accrued his tax liability by $50. So we want to increase that expense down, down here where it says $100. We want to increase that to $150 so that we pay the right amount at the end of the year and that the right amount is reported on our 941 and on our DE7. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to go up to Employees drop-down menu and go to Pay Taxes and Liabilities and in this drop-down menu we'll find Adjust Payroll Liabilities. Let's go there. And we get this window. Now this window is really pretty important that we get the dates right. You know how in QuickBooks dates are real, real um, a guideline and need to be real specific in order for the accounting to get done appropriately. So the first date is going to default automatically to the date, to the current date, to whatever date your real live data is. So we want to adjust that to the time period we want the adjustment to be for. So I want to, this to be in my December the 31st adjustment. So I'm going to change the date to December 31, 2015. The second date over here is the date that we want the adjustment to affect our liability balance. So if we're doing um, a report such as the 941 where our liability balance needs to match each quarter, we want to make sure we're real specific about our effective date here. I'm going to go ahead and select October 31, 2015 because it was back in October that we didn't accrue appropriately. Then we have some options here. We can either make our adjustment company-wide so it doesn't affect any employee record or we can make it employee-specific. In this example, we want to make it employee specific to Greg Snyder. So we're going to select employee and select Greg Snyder in our employee name field. And down here in the body of our window, we have our payroll item to select. So we select the correct payroll item that we want to make the adjustment for, unemployment company taxes. And we want to put the amount in here. Now if we had under over accrued, we would want to put a negative $50 here. But in this case we under accrued so we want to increase our liability and expense by $50. So we enter $50 here. And over in the memo we would write why we're making the adjustment. Now we need to make sure that the right accounts are affected. We want to increase our liability and increase our expense. The accounts that are associated with that payroll tax item. So let's go over here to this button that says accounts affected and it's going to help us know what's going to happen here. So it gives us some, some choices. We can either choose not to affect any accounts to just increase our payment or to affect the liabilities and the expense accounts. And that's exactly what we want to happen. We want our balance sheet and our P&L to be correct and we also want our tax return to reflect the right numbers. So make sure that that radio button is highlighted, affect liabilities and expense accounts and say OK here and then say OK again over here on the far right and that's going to record the journal entry for us. Okay see that Greg Schneider's unemployment tax is now $150. So that has caused that to increase. 
Now let's take another scenario. After we've done all of our analysis for our payroll taxes for the last quarter of 2015, we discover that due to the rounding factors, we have under accrued our liability by 17 cents. So we want all of our reports to balance perfectly. We want our general ledger to, to balance as well. We want our liability to have that 17 cents. We want our expenses to have that 17 cents. So we can make an adjustment there as well. So I'm going to go back up to my employees, payroll tax liabilities, and go to adjust payroll liabilities one more time. And I'm going to make my, uh, my date and my effective date both December the 31st of 2015, because I want to affect it as of that period. But I want this to be a company-wide adjustment. I just want to increase both accounts by 15 cents. So I'm going to leave the company radio button highlighted. I'm going to tab down here to the body and again choose my, my payroll item of my unemployment company taxes and just increase this by 17 cents. Whoops, 17 cents. And put my memo in there that's due to rounding. And again, I want to make sure that the right accounts are affected it's going to affect the general ledger accounts that are associated with that payroll tax item and say accounts affected. Make sure that that radio button is highlighted there and say OK. I'm going to say OK again. That's going to record the journal entry. Notice nothing changed here for Greg Schneider or for our employee tax liability. Nothing changed here on our payroll summary report. Let's go see what the effect is now under our our window to pay our liabilities. If we go to employees, payroll taxes and liabilities, and pay my scheduled liabilities, let's go there and we see that our California unemployment and training tax is $160.17. Well, let's see what that's made up of. We can drill down on that by just clicking on the 16017 and see all the transactions here. And look at there, there's that tax li there's that liability adjustment, that journal entry we just did for $50. If we scroll through this, we wanted that to be affected, you see, on October the 31st, so that's why it's up there. We'll scroll through this and we'll find that down here is the actual paycheck for Greg Snyder that, that we did accrue the $100 for. And then here's another adjustment for $0.17. Cents. If we were to drill down on that $0.17, cents, we'll, we'll get the adjustment window that we just saw. To see the journal entry, the entire journal entry behind that, we can use our Control Y feature in QuickBooks to see the journal entry behind the scenes and see that it did indeed increase our expense account and our liability account. I'm going to go ahead and escape out of here and out of this window as well. And now you can see that we're able to pay our full payroll tax liability. If we want to go here to View and Pay that check, Put a check mark over here. Go here to view and pay, and we can see that we would be paying an employment tax of $150.17 and the employment training tax of $10. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. I'm not, I'm not ready to pay it. I just wanted to display that. So I'm going to go and close this window now. Go back to my payroll summary re report. And just to recap really briefly, in order to make adjustments to your payroll tax liabilities in QuickBooks. You're going to follow the path here under Employees, Payroll Taxes and Liabilities, and adjust your payroll tax liabilities. And just follow the path here. Make sure you select Accounts Affected and select the option that you want to choose. I really hope this was helpful. My goodness, I've got something wrong here. I hope this, this was helpful. Oh my. I look forward to um, presenting another webinar for you. Lost my mouse, it seems like. There we go. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. Remember to use your Adjust Payroll Liabilities screen. Thank you very much.